We need some help out here right away. Please come right over, Doctor. We're taking Mrs. Milliken to the delivery room right now. I don't have any patient by that name, Emily. No. Don't wake me up for the wrong ones. Mrs. Milliken asked for you, Doctor. She was sent to you by Dr. Winston of Los Angeles. She's an act of labor, so of course we admitted her. Tell him it's urgent. Please hurry. All right, Emily. I'll be there in 15 minutes. Um, who's on tonight? Uh, ask him to take a look at her, will you? Well, looks like we've got a customer. Remember, my baby comes first. It's tough one, all right. Central preview. Cesarean and quickly. An air conditioner, 120 volts. Can't help it. You know what a central preview means. It's the only chance for either of them. Baby's heart sounds are good, better than hers. Get the lab technician in fast. Type her blood. Use the hospital blood bank. I'll get the permit from her husband. Mm, if you can find him. Oh, you're right. Well, I'll attend to it. Night supervisor. You get her prepared for surgery. Yes, sir. Hello, Emily. Did Mrs. Milliken say where her husband is? Uh, no address but the hotel, eh? Uh, and there's no Mr. Milliken there, I see. I'm going to have to do a section. Uh, yes, yes, all right. And Emily, put through an emergency call to Los Angeles. Dr. P.J. Winston. That's right. Milliken, your husband isn't here with you? No. Uh, this is a consent form, which must be signed, hospital regulations. Usually the husband signs, but... Uh... I'll sign it. If your husband were here, I'd explain to him, but because he's not, I must tell you. There's danger, extreme danger. We might be able to save your life, but we'd most likely lose the child. Or, we can save the child, but... But not me. That's probably how it would be. Forget me. I told you before. It's my baby who must live. Mrs. Milliken, consider carefully. You're young, you have your whole life ahead of you. My life's past. Any future I have, my baby will live it for me. 
It's... It's my choice, Doctor. And it's... It's one I've considered carefully for a long time now. You call the Dr. Winston in Los Angeles came through. And? He said he doesn't have a Mrs. Mulligan as a patient. What? He doesn't know any Mrs. Mulligan. someone whose presence here would be of comfort to you. No, not now. Perhaps once. How do you like it? Oh, I feel it's lovely. Yeah, it's lovely, all right. I've got what they call know-how. I can promote Darton's here and the 62,000 some odd items it sells in Los Angeles. I'm stumped. I don't know how to promote this. I don't know how to ask a girl to marry me. How to propose? That's quite a problem. You could put a full-page ad in the Times, or you could do it the hard way. What's that? Straighten your necktie and say, will you marry me? <laughs> That's what I like about you, Tommy. You're basic. The only basic things about me are my feet, and they hurt. Would you marry me? No. That's the nicest proposal I ever didn't get. You may try it on me again, just for size. Jane, you, you know her better than anybody else. What do you think Nancy will say? Enough, I hope, to make you happy. What about the ring? I'm sure it's right. It isn't too, uh, uh, would you be happy with it? I mean, if it were yours? Mind if I take a look? My, what puny things we women pawn our souls for. Of course, I'd pawn mine for a lot punier than that. <laughs> you like it, huh? It's Trey Sacco, Bill. Now you run along, and Jane and I can have a good cry on Mr. Dorton's time. Cry about what? We'll think of something. Dinner is for schedule, Jane. But won't you and Nancy want You'll to... help me celebrate if it's yes. You'll help me plan a new attack if it's no. And if it rains, we'll call, call the, the game, game off. off. Thank you. Jane, Jane, how big an ignoramus can you be? What do you mean? When it comes to a moor, I've been a mooring a lot longer than you have. You do all right. I astigmatic eye, I do. Look, I speak with a wisdom carved out of my own lonely years. You're in love with that man. He's half in love with you, although he doesn't know it. Now do battle for him. He's in love with my sister. Sister Nancy, the perfect mate. She's young. Youth should be a blessing, not an apology. And she's flighty some, but she's real. She'll be an all right wife. She will like Hoot and Holler. Oh, I know you love her. You brought her up and gave up a lot to do it. You got her a job here in the store, with which she condescends to occupy part of her time. But to Sister Nancy, marriage is romance spelled with a capital dollar sign. What's Bill's salary? I don't know. Less than he deserves, I'm sure. Why? 15000 a year, plus a Christmas bonus. Sister Nancy knows. She told me with butter in her mouth. Nancy's not one of your favorite people. This we know. Let's not talk about it anymore. And what's with Nancy and Walter Eviot, that monster with the millions? <laughs> Tommy, don't you have work to do? Yes, but you know I never finish yesterday's work until tomorrow. You're right for Bill. You're what he needs. You're the kind that only loves once, and this is it. You're letting him go, and that's criminal. How can I be convincing when my feet hurt? <laughs> I've swallowed my pride and gotten larger sized shoes. Arch supports, nothing helps. How can I go to a psychoanalyst and tell him my feet hurt? Jane. Bill loves her. And I know she won't say yes unless... 
She's being stood up, but good. Hello, let me speak to Mr. Raviot, please. Tell him it's Linda Ross. Hello, you. Yes, it's me, all right. I, I called you three times today and said I was Nancy Langley and got a fast brush. I had a hunch Linda might be the magic password. Oh, yes, we'll be nice and civilized about it. Just like that, eh, Walter? Nancy gets the heave-ho. She's out and Linda's in, eh? You are rotten. You're just as rotten and repulsive as everyone says you are. But I... I happen to like you. Walter, please, not just like this. Walter. Bop, right on the head. <laughs> Boy, that's what I call reaching. Figuring she could nail that guy. That would be like latching onto the mint. <laughs> Nancy, where is Nancy? Yes, Miss Williams. Nancy, the hurdy gurdy. Miss Nancy, you better watch that Ryan bourbon. You know, these calories have a way of bunching themselves in the wrong places, they keep you warm. But they might erupt on these size twelves. our very last word. I don't know. May I see the back, please? Yes, of course. Miss Nancy. The back, please. I don't know. Haven't you something a little bit more something more... I don't know. Yes, of course. Uh, Miss Nancy, the coral number, please. The coral number, please. Hey, Chief Thundercloud. Hit it. I'm on the warpath, all right. Blue scalp, yeah? My own. Oh, wait a minute. You are alone. What would it take to give you a lift? Oh, a ten-ton derrick. Ten-ton derrick. Let's see if I've got one on me. I uh, had to give it a champagne production. A candlelight, a couple hundred violins, a corner booth. But, uh, well, if it'll do, it'll do now. Nancy, would you marry me? Who should we drink to first? Nancy the bride, hmm? To Nancy and to Bill. And Bill Jr. Bill Jr.? Oh. <laughs> oh, maybe Willamina. And don't be too long about it. I want to be an honor. To Auntie Jane 
and many, many of them. Thank you, Jane. With all my thanks for so very, very much. <laughs> I'll miss you. <laughs> Bill, don't think you're getting all the best of it. Living with Nancy has its drawbacks. She always leaves the soap on the shower floor. She opens all the mail, whether it's hers or not. <laughs> and until she's had her coffee in the morning. <laughs> oh, I'll be glad to get rid of her. Oh, fine talk. When do you take her off my hands? Well, I thought we'd have the wedding next month up to Coral Lodge. It'll be open then. It's lovely there. Just we three, him. And Tommy. And Charlie, of course. And Dr. Winston. You'll adore him when you meet him. He brought Nancy and me into the world. And I should mother out of it. Nancy, he'd be so hurt if you didn't ask him. All right, all now, right. Now, wait a, wait a minute. Just those few and that's all. Maybe this sounds a little selfish, but I want this wedding to belong to us. I don't want to share it. <laughs> all right, well, anything you say. Hey, Jane, stop puttering around and come on in here. I'm tired talking to myself. Dressing and undressing myself in my mind, I've tried on about a dozen different wedding gowns already. But you know the one I keep coming back to. I haven't the slightest idea. Oh, yes, you do. The one I wore in the fashion show down at the spring. <laughs> I knew it. Quite a wedding gown. You look like the purest little devil in it. Why do all the right things have to cost so much? Why, 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 why? You don't suppose Dortons would lend it to me for a fast 24 hours? No, they wouldn't. But we'll manage it anyway. Oh, Jane, you couldn't. Why, did it cost you... It's not too much for no family heirloom. Family heirloom? It's brand new. It was fitted on me. We're starting it off. In 200 years, it'll be an heirloom. Oh, Jane, I shouldn't. But I will. And no more modeling. Now, I'll sit there, and they can show me. And, Jane, I want the bridesmaids in that very pale turquoise. Bridesmaids? What happened to that simple wedding you and Bill were planning? And that was Bill. He was being very much the male in the house tonight. He seemed pretty set on it. I'll unset him. In easy stages. It'll be painless. Men don't know what they want anyway. You're not marrying men. You're marrying Bill. Oh, Jean, he's no different. He's just like all the others. He sees a beautiful girl. He puts a leash around his own neck and hands the end of it to me so I can lead him to the altar. And then what happens? Now, oh, darling, really. You know, I'm glad I'm a gal who's beautiful. You can build a career on being beautiful, but not a marriage. That's forgetting about yourself. Don't be hokey-pokey. It's more than just forgetting about yourself. It's, it's putting yourself out. Concerning yourself with him and what he wants. Taking care of him and helping him. And doing it in such a way that he doesn't feel he has to say thank you all the time. Jane, you've been reading too many marriage manuals. Anyway, it's my wedding, and with a little luck, it may be the only one I'll ever have. So let me manage it my own way, ma'am. I do love him, don't you? Why wouldn't I? <laughs> they... They don't come any better than Bill. You really make him happy. I thought he was supposed to make me happy. this woman to thy wedded wife to live together after God's ordinance in the holy estate of matrimony? Wilt thou love her, comfort her, 
honor and keep her in sickness and in health, and forsaking all others, keep thee only unto her so long as ye both shall live. I will. Nancy, wilt thou have this man to thy wedded husband, to live together after God's ordinance in the holy estate of matrimony? Wilt thou love him, comfort him, honor, and keep him in sickness and in health, and forsaking all others, keep thee only unto him so long as ye both shall live? I will. <laughs> oh, oh, Perky, you're a fool. Hmm? You do? No, I do too. <laughs> huh? Oh, now, Perky, mind your manners. Yeah, I'll see you later, hmm? Bye. Perky must be quite a creature. Calls me every hour on the hour, like worldwide news on the radio. <laughs> There's something about him that bothers me, though. What? Well, whenever we're alone together, all of a sudden he looks way off, lost somewhere, but completely. I may chit-chat and he simply won't answer me. What could that be? A man without a little mystery is a very meager man. Yeah, I suppose so. <gasps> Ooh, these shoes are killing me. There's something I meant to tell you. What? Yeah, what? I was standing over there with a cup of coffee, trying to make up my mind what to wear for Perky tonight, and the door opened, and Stanley... That's it. I got it from Stanley, who got it from Thelma, who got it from Mr. Levitt, who got it from the old man's secretary, that the board of directors has approved Bill's ad campaign. Glory, that's wonderful. Yeah, well, it's not so wonderful. The old man wired Bill. Bill gets home tomorrow. Oh, no. Mm Mm-hmm. No, that's not right. That's not fair. Well, better half a honeymoon than nothing. And I speak as one who's had nothing but the nothing. What can I do? Well, you could speak to Stanley, you could speak to Thelma, you could speak to Mr. Levitt, you could speak to... Of course, you're right. There's nothing I can do. Did you say tomorrow? Yeah, why? Could your perky fellow get a fellow for me? Oh, I get it. Kind of a buffer between you and Bill. Hmm? Well, I don't see why not. When Perky calls, I'll have him comb the kennels. Hmm? Oh, come on now, Jane, snap out of it. Yeah, let's go out tonight and have fun, huh? Yes, let's have fun. Yes, Pony's nice enough up here. Tennis, swimming, golf, etc., etc. Wonderful for the fresh outdoor time. <laughs> the trouble is, I'm the fresh indoor type. When, Bunny? Oh, no. Come in. Sounds like a wonderful party, but I can't make it Friday night. But tell them I'll be there in spirit anyway. Yes? Mrs. Brennis, your husband has lunch for you at the pool. Thank you. Goodbye, Bunny. What? <laughs> no, Bunny. Lunch. Keep your eyes on your lunch. With you around? Now, what's their figure of a woman? Have your picture taken? Come on, pull up a chair. You can have lunch with us without talking, you know. Say, it's a delicious salad. Shrimp just arrived by airplane. Iced tea for, for a hot day. Hello. Hello. I live in Cleveland. You do? Well, you're a long way from home. What's your name? Betsy. I'm Bill. This is Nancy. Hello, Betsy. She's pretty. Are you here for the divorce, too? Uh, no, no, honey. We're, uh, we're not here for the divorce. I am. I'm in the settlement. First, Mama gets me for eight months, then Daddy gets me for four months. That's in the settlement. I had ice cream for my lunch. Where's your ice cream? Uh, well... Uh, we didn't order any. Oh. It's eight months long. 
Uh, no. No, honey, it's not uh, too long. Oh, I'm glad. My daddy misses me. He told me so. Betsy! Bye. It was nice meeting you. Really? Was it? Certainly was. I'm so glad. Well, you certainly made a hit with her. Yeah. Poor little kid. You are a sentimental one. Darling, you're not responsible for all the trials and tribulations of every child in the world. I want a dozen of them. That did it. Well, good, bad, or indifferent. It's from the old man. Him. He didn't send us a present, not even a card. He and the board like my new ad campaign. They've given it the go-ahead. Oh, Bill, that's wonderful. They want me back tomorrow. So soon? That's what the man says, board meeting Friday. Friday. I'm going to telephone him and tell him we won't be back till next week, campaign or no campaign. Oh, darling, I love you for it, but this is important to us. We'll leave tomorrow. Sweetheart. I'll make it up to you when we go away next year. Where are you going? You're invited. <laughs> seems so foolish. Hmm? I said it seems so foolish. Quiet. He liked me well enough without it. What are you mumbling about? He liked me nicely. These past four nights in my pristine state. Why put her on now? Darling, I'm experimenting. This new lip line is bound to make men swoon. <laughs> now, just one more touch. Jane. Steady. Oh, I, um, I hate to ask you this. Oh, no, you don't. Not tonight, you don't. Don't what? I know you, Innocence Incorporated. What are you talking about? Jane? You don't make her work overtime tonight. Now, you're married. Go home to your other hand. I phoned her. The permission is granted. We are going out tonight. She and me, and he and he. We make a very fancy foursome. Or don't you read the columns? You're going out tonight? We've been going out for four nights running. And all the little he's are beginning to he around. Tommy, will you stop bugling? You sound like mess call. Look, Jane, this is sort of important. Well, get somebody else to work with you and leave Jane alone. Come on, Jane. Is it too late for you to get someone else? Well, yes, I'm afraid it is. Tommy, run along and meet your he, and when mine joins you, tell him I'll be late. I take a very gloomy view of this. It means you're going to have two men all to yourself. Of course, I never thought of that. Hurry up, will you? Just me and he and he. Very nice. <laughs> oh, that Tommy. Her life really rotates on just one point. Well, that's what happens when you don't marry young. Get too eager. Good news. The old man told me Levitt's leaving and I'm in line. Congratulations. I, uh, I wouldn't have bothered you otherwise tonight. Perfectly all right. Let's start. Oh, you've been here all day. Let's grab a bite and work at your place. We can't work at my house. Nancy's having some of what she calls the pack over. All right. Who's this fellow you've been going out with? A friend of Perky's. Not Mark Hickman. Do you know him? Yep. No other comment? It's none of my business, is it? No, it isn't. It was what I said about Mark Hickman, or what I didn't say. A girl has to think about getting married when she's young. That's what you said, didn't you? Ah, you still at it? Hi, Tommy. Oh, no, it can't be. We'll have to finish this up in the morning. Make the old man's life bright by noon. I assume the work you did tonight will advance civilization by three full seconds. When people find out that Dorton's is more than just a store, it's a way of living, don't you think they'll be happier? Infinitely. How'd it go? Well, Perky was in his usual good form. Say, that was a very clever move you made tonight. What? Not seeing Mark Hickman. Of course, he did nothing but talk about you for six solid hours. How beautiful, how attractive, how intelligent, how, how. He's hooked, all you have to do is reel him in. Jane, would you phone Nancy and tell her I'm on my way? No. Hmm? Oh, yes, you're right. She's asleep. Well, thanks for helping hand. Night. 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 Bill. Bill, I... I'll see you in the morning.
morning. A fine evening. We did some good work. Thanks, pal. Fine evening. Thanks, pal. Oh, my astigmatic eye. be asleep by now. <laughs> no, no, they, they just left. Oh. Bill, this is Bunny Holly. Bunny, this is Bill. <laughs> Shake hands and come out fighting. <laughs> Glad to know you, sir. Bunny, we were drinking in the view, as they say. Yes, well, I hope you like it. Very lovely, sir. How'd your party turn out? Too bad you missed it. Pat had a lovely howl. Bunny here wouldn't budge an inch until he met you. I'll confess, sir, I've always had my eye on Nancy. There are a lot of us. We were really surprised, sir, when we heard that she was marrying you. I mean, sir... Yes, yes, old man, I know just what you mean. Uh, have a nightcap before you go, won't you? Oh, no, no, thank you, sir. I'm in training. Uh, I'd better be leaving. Oh, so soon? It's getting late. Good night, Nancy. Good night, buddy. Call me. Good night, sir. Don't bother seeing me out. Oh, I insist, old man, I insist. calling me sir. How old does he think I am anyway? Makes me feel like I married a child bride. But he didn't mean anything by it. I know he didn't. That's what makes it worse. I'm not old enough for him to call me sir, am I? Well, am I? I uh, called you at the office. I wasn't at the office. So I gathered. I worked at Jane's place. Oh? Oh, say, I forgot to tell you, I've got some good news. I couldn't tell you when I called you from the office. It isn't official yet, but Levitt's leaving. I'm in line for his job. That's fine, Bill. Now I can move Jane into my spot. She and I can really work together. How nice. Now don't you be standoffish. Just like Jane this evening. How like can two sisters be? She's in a mood and I come home and find you in the very same mood. I'm not standoffish, sir. Sir? Why, you... Take it back. Take it... Take it back. Take it back. No, sir, sir, sir. Take it back. Will you take it back? Right. Take it back. I take it back. Sir? Well, is he there? I don't care what happens, but the whole thing infuriates me. Well, what are you muttering about? About that creepo out there. See, how about giving me some relief? Who's gazing at the body? The Duchess. What, she? No wonder you're getting in such a stew. Six months married and she gets fixier all the time. What? Oh. Well, thank you. I wonder how she's going to like this. Nothing. Georgia? May I, uh... Thank you. No, no, I don't think so. Your husband can't come down to help select your dress. Are you sure you called him? Of course I called him. What did he say? Your sister answered the phone. She says he's in conference. Oh. You know, it's a good thing your sister is your sister. The girls do chatter, nevertheless. <laughs> I knew you'd get a laugh. Of course, I know it's ridiculous, and believe me, the girls do too, but... 
Well, you know how they love to gossip. Oh, nothing too malicious, you understand, but... Well, when two people work together nights as often as your husband and your sister... What gives? That's one sale I don't mind losing. Please, Grin. Hello, Mrs. Grin. Oh, is he? Yes, he's in. I want that uh, traffic count and, and the clerk count also. Oh, hello, darling. I'm sorry. And that last Eddie Roger report. I gotta have that. Don't forget it. Could I talk to you for just a minute? Mr. Roger's report is with. Hello, Nancy. You look lovely. Where is it? It's it's with the last five months. Yet. Here it is, right in front. Oh yes, yes, yes. I do look lovely, oh. don't I? <laughs> Forgive him. He's still scared of the old man. I don't remember when this. What? Oh, forgive me, darling. I'm sorry. Yes. Yes, you do look superb. Just like a man. Don't ask her. Kiss her. You're becoming quite a little executive. Yes. Mr. Dorton's waiting. All right, I'll be right there. I'm awfully sorry, Angel. I can't have dinner with you tonight. I have to rush out to a business conference with the old man. You say that as though it were a welcome change. Well, it seems to me that any other wife... I'm would... not any other wife. No, you certainly aren't. And I don't like being alone so much, Bill. Oh, yes, I'm sorry. Tell you what, you and Jane have dinner at the Regency, and I'll join you as soon as I can break away. Hmm? How nice. Sisters haven't been together for a long time. Eat, soak up the fiddle music. And count the minutes till you get there? <sighs> Something like that. Well, see you both. I don't wait for anyone. Funny about the old man. Bill and the others love him, yet they're scared to death of him. Hello? Let me speak to Bunny Howard. Don't be a fool. I'm sorry, Jane. Watch that temper. Sometimes I hate him, and you and myself most of all. And I don't like being married. It used to be laughs and fun with Bunny in the pack. The more I'm married, the more I'm afraid to be alone with any of them. To them, my marriage license is like a green light. That pack. They think they're the last word in civilization, and they're only its last gasp. And then there's nothing for me to do at home, Jane. I don't know what's the matter with me, but I, I get picky and, and bicker and make him miserable. And there's no one to talk to about it, not even you. You've kept away from me, and I don't even know what I've done to you. I don't know. I guess I'm your sob sister. You're my baby. Oh, Jack. Who's all mixed up and confused? Me. Don't blame yourself too much. It's not just your fault. It's not? No. Girls spend all their time getting ready to get married. And then when they do... They wonder why. I know Bill's here 10, 12, 14 hours a day. But he has to be, to get ahead and become a success. And of course, that leaves you with lots of long, empty time. Yes. It's up to you to fill that time, and fill it in such a way that'll bring you and Bill closer than you've ever been before. I know. Children. I've thought of that. I don't know, Jane. I'm not sure. I want something and I don't know what I want. I don't think you can bring children up to be sure of themselves unless you're sure of yourself. You have been thinking. Well, I've had enough time for it. Sit down yourself. No, I've got to run. Tommy, Perky, and love a he. 
Oh, waiting breathlessly. Oh, come on, stick around. I'll tell you all about what Tommy happened. would hex me. <laughs> Poor Tommy. She's all out to get Perky to marry her. But every time she gets him to the point, he goes into a blank spell. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Good night, Jane. Bill, we picked you apart. Bone by bone. Uh, you don't know it yet, but there's nothing left of you. Really? <laughs> night. Night, Jane. Oh, you got my gloves. Dang. She gets more wonderful all the time. I don't like these men that Tommy rounds up for, though they aren't half good enough. Well, at least we can be thankful she doesn't see Mark Hickman anymore. He was the worst of the lot. Bill, do you love me? What? Do you love me? Why, of course I love you. You haven't told me so in a long time. Haven't I? Bourbon soda. I'll have one, too. Oh, it's the first for you in a long while, isn't it? Not since that night for the lodge on our honeymoon when I got the hiccups. <laughs> that was something. Bill, let's spend our anniversary up there. Well, now don't tell me you're getting sentimental, too. Remember that little girl we saw there? I think her name was Betsy. Yeah. She was the cutest kid I ever saw. Don't sell them in stores, you know. I know it. Don't look so frightened. Courage, darling, courage. It's easy enough for you to say. Yes, dear, I know. No, but you have really? nothing to worry about. Yes, now. my dear. I've gained 25 pounds in just three months. You know, this is my fish. Before this, I never ate pickles. Never. Mrs. Yes, Prentice. Well, I tell you, I'm going to take this dress and all the rest of them and pile them up and light a match and just laugh while they burn. <laughs> oh, not those little sweet pickles or the dill pickles, but those great Welcome big... to my parlor. <laughs> How's the handsomest unattached man in California today? California, west of the Rockies, with many warm testimonials from the East. <laughs> I claim prior rights. I met you first. You mean that I was the first man you ever saw? That's absolutely true. You took one squint at me and hollered your head off. <laughs> Dr. Phil, if you don't tell me, I'll holler right now. You ready for the verdict? Mm -hmm. Just what would you like to hear, Nancy? That I was right. Well, you were. Nancy, <laughs> darling. And just about in time to hang up another stocking for Christmas. Oh, oh I, I want a little girl. Well, tell the doctor so he can mark girl on the records and bring you one. And let's have no mistakes about it. <laughs> All taken care of. Nancy, just one thing for my records. Tell me, just why do you want this baby? Because I've always wanted something for my very own. Oh, I see. And there's nothing that can be more mine than my own little girl, is there? No, nothing. <laughs> oh, it'll be fun for me. We'll go into a restaurant and I'll perch her up and let her do the ordering. And when we go swimming, we'll wear the same kind of bathing suits, big and little. <laughs> and I'll never be alone. We'll always be together every place and all the time, and she'll call me Nancy. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to me. I've got her talking and swimming and ordering in restaurants, and all she has so far is promised from you. <laughs> What does she do now, Doctor, besides just wait and wish? Well, right now she sees Miss Geary. She'll set your appointments for you, Nancy, and give you a little book of rules and regulations. And don't forget, it's easier not to put on weight than it is to struggle trying to get it off later. Yes, sir. I want you to see me once every week. Miss Geary is in here. Wait for me, Jane. Yes, darling. What's the matter, Dr. Phil? You seem angry. Yes, I am. With me. Well, you brought her up, didn't you? Yes. I don't... Ad oh, never mind, Jane. Let's forget. What is it? It's just that 
Every time I ask them that question, why they want their babies, so many of them answer the way Nancy did. To have something for our very own. You see, it hits you just exactly the same way that it always hits me. Not a word about the husband or making him happy, or even making the child happy. Oh, no. That child's coming into this world with a job to perform, to make Nancy happy. I don't know, Jane. I, I really don't know. Marriage used to be something holy. I suppose it was. It was a ceremony. It meant dying and being born again at the same moment. It meant giving up all thought for yourself and assuming every responsibility for making the other person happy. Yes, that's the pledge. Today, today they think that happiness is something coming to them. So it were a bond they own, supposed to pay dividends every minute of the day. They refuse to learn the oldest rule there is. You get what you give. And I'm not going to try to make a polite joke to laugh it off with. That's what I feel, and it's the truth. And who's angry now? I am. Hurts when it hits home, doesn't it? You think I'm being too hard on you, Nancy? I'm trying to think of an excuse for her. Don't do it, Jane. There isn't any. Let's forget about it. You said you wanted her to see you every week. Make sure that she does. Isn't once a month the usual? Yes. Then why does she... Is there any danger? She wants that baby very much. And I owe it to you. Yes, I know. I'll see that she gets it. Thank you, Dr. Phil. Goodbye. Thanks. Jane. Jane, you grow lovelier every day. <laughs> that kind of talk I like. But more and more the way your mother did. I like that, too. Bye, Dr. Hello. Hello. Merry Christmas. Happy Yuletide greetings. Merry Christmas. Oh, hello. Merry Christmas. Thank you. Gee, I got one, too. Merry Christmas to you. Merry Christmas. see what difference that makes. I know she won't be able to sit for a couple of weeks. But every kid should have a teddy bear, and Deborah's going to have a teddy bear. You sound just like a politician making promises. Well, I can at least keep my promise. I saw it at the toy department. Isn't it cute? Oh, oh Mr. Ames, Credits, more flowers. Miss Ames, uh, could you get Deborah in here? C couldn't I be with her for just a little while? Why, I think... I'm sorry, darling, but there are very strict rules, and we mustn't try to break them. Oh. I'll call you, Miss Ames. Yes, Miss Ames. Fathers are neglected. Say, I bought a book. It's uh, all about how to raise babies from the father's viewpoint. I'll read you some of it. Here. Uh, when the child reaches that age, when the father... What's the matter, dear? You tired? Yes, I am. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm awfully proud of you. So is Dr. Winston. Him. He says you're doing great. Well, I better leave so you can get some rest. Bill, call me when you get home. Won't you be asleep? Please call me. Yes, darling. That's for Deborah. Mm -mm. That one I keep for myself. Try again. That does it. 
Bring Deborah in now, Miss Ames. Mrs. Prentice, I could have arranged to have your husband see the baby. You knew that. Yes, I knew that. I want to see her now. Yes, Mrs. Prentice. Kids are more fun. The crib belongs there. Oh, uh, madam, how do you like my curtains? Oh, they look lovely. Yeah? Put that over there. Yes, ma'am. I want everything to be perfect. Mrs. Prentice gets so. Let's see. Blankets, pillow, diapers. Yay! In here, Tommy. Mrs. Perky, if you please. Perky? Uh-huh. He didn't. Uh-huh, he did. He finally <laughs> asked me to marry him. <gasps> Hallelujah. Well, just so there should be no misunderstanding, I said yes five times. <laughs> Darling, one yes would have done it. Lots of luck. Got it, girl. Congratulations. <laughs> well, thank you, fellas. <laughs> Madam, here's my card. Keep it just in case. You see, I represent the Sunset Diaper Service. Just in case. <laughs> and just in case. <laughs> well, what a lovely compliment. Now, tell me all the gruesome details. It all happened in the gas station while the man was putting in ten gallons of ethyl. You know how I've always almost worked Perky up to the point, and then he'd go into one of those blank silences of his? Uh -huh. Well, this time it was just too much for my feeble flesh to bear. So I put it right up to him. Perky, I said, whence come these frustrating silences? And then he told me. Guess what? What? His feet hurt just like mine. <laughs> <laughs> and he was too shy to tell me. <laughs> well, they can keep my job and no regrets. We'll live the plain, sane life. <laughs> Mrs. Perky. That MRS means my real start. Hello, Mrs. Perky. But I'll sure miss Tommy. She's my anchor to windward. She's my good companion, my only companion. I'm afraid I'll be lost without her. <laughs> Excuse me. Can I fix some of these things? You might as well learn now. Hello? Oh, hello, Nancy. No, no, Bill's not here. Oh, everything's fine. <laughs> I'm preparing for your homecoming. What, dear? Well, Nancy, dear, you, you couldn't fix the nursery. Well, I was only trying to help. Yes, but... Well, I know you did, dear, but... Well, it's no reason to carry on like this. It's just a little thing. I'm sorry. Hello! Hi. You haven't bought more toys. She's my first daughter. I gotta do something for her. Well, how's everything coming? Let's okay, see. fine. Yeah. Yeah, looks great, looks great. How's the baby? Oh, fine. Nancy won't let me see her. Whoop! <laughs> Excuse me. What do you mean she won't let you see the baby? Tommy. Huh? Tommy, I have to go out. Will you be here for a while? Yeah. I'll call you then. Okay. But there's a reason for these moods, Jane, for her bitterness and possessiveness. What is it, Doctor? What's wrong with Nancy? Jane, as close as you are to Nancy and as close as I am to you, I'm afraid I can't tell you. I'd be betraying a professional confidence. Oh. But I will tell you this about yourself, and you can draw your own conclusions about Nancy. Yes, Dr. Phil? Perhaps you've noticed how I've always encouraged you in your work. Yes. And never encouraged you to marry. Yes. Do you know why? You've hinted at it. 
drop phrases here and there. A matter of two and two. I've tried to let you know as gradually as possible so that it wouldn't come as too great a shock. And I'm glad that you've understood and never married. I've been in love enough for it, but somehow it didn't seem fair to marry a man and not be able to give him children. You could, but it would be dangerous. Sometimes it seems hereditary. Your mother spending 30 hours in labor with you and dying a month after giving birth to Nancy. You're so much like your mother, my dear, that you'd have the same problem. With Nancy, it wasn't quite so acute. Not quite so acute. More than that, you'll have to ask Nancy yourself. Thank you, Dr. Phil. Goodbye. I know how much you'd like to have a child. And I also know what a fine mother you'd be. You know it, and I know it. But I'll probably never have a child to know it. Visiting hours are over. Professional confidence. He's a fine one to talk. Killing mother and almost killing me. Nancy, stop it. You know better than that. You make it sound as though he did it deliberately. I'm sorry, Jane. There's no one better. No one could have done more. Oh, I know that. It's just that these last few months, knowing what happened to mother and how easily it could have happened to me, Jane, I've been so scared. Did Bill know that? You are wonderful. What? Your first thought, Bill. Not one thought for the little sister, how she feels. But does Bill know? Nancy, please. How I wish I were like you, clever and cool and sure of yourself. You're smart, you are. You come first in your life. I've only wanted to help you. You liked designing Deborah's nursery, didn't you, and picking out her things for her? It was fun giving your maternal instincts a little exercise, wasn't it? Well, Deborah is mine. If you want children, you can have some of your own. <laughs> That's right, Jane. Run away. You always run away when you have to face things, don't you? Nancy, dear, you're upset. Tomorrow when you come home with Deborah. It won't be necessary for you to be there. Learn to stand. She can oh, just stand it. How old is she, Bill? Huh? How old is she? She's about ten years old here. Oh, <laughs> no, oh really? Oh, oh. No, no, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> now listen, now, watch this. Watch this. Yeah. This is cute. <clears throat> See, oh. I get your little foot down. Oh. And oh. Oh. <laughs> had an awful time getting her to eat this stuff. No, 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 watch this. This is cute. Now look, hey, need it. what is she eating? <laughs> ice cream. Ice cream? No. Oh. Oh. This really is warm ice cream. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> now watch. That's it. That's it. He, oh, now, here, here's the trip to Honolulu. This is on the boat. Honolulu? Yeah, a little Nui Nui. <laughs> <laughs> Must have Look, been a wonderful trip. You never trip. saw so much pointing in your life. There's a seagull. Yeah, <laughs> you certainly know how to mug the camera. <laughs> it there. looks seasick. Yeah, nobody <laughs> got sick. Oh, now, here we are in Mexico. Yeah, there's a yucca tree right behind. She thought she was riding a horse <laughs> right here. Never looks like she's daddy's girl. Yeah, she's daddy's girl, all right. <laughs> now I'm going to show her the yucca tree, see? She, she yeah, wouldn't right. ever look at it. Couldn't get to see it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Honey, what are you doing? Why don't we play some bridge? We always manage to lose. 
Bunny might enjoy that. Oh, no, I want to see how it all turns out. When does boy meet girl? Yeah, and I got one more reel I want to show you, the photography. Really, street. darling, just because we are used to dull evenings is no reason why we should inflict one on Bunny and Tina. Well, uh, I think we'll take off. I promised Tina we wouldn't stay too Must late. You go? Nancy. Yes. Well, I guess it's none of my business, but... <laughs> no, that's right. It's none of your business at all. It's better than a movie. I thought you might like to meet our daughter in... Bill, waking the child at this hour. Oh, look. The proud father. Bill, she's Ooh. beautiful. <laughs> Say... Say what? I didn't think a little thing like this could get you. <laughs> she's our daughter. I want for her whatever she wants for herself, plus just a little luck beside. <laughs> what utter nonsense. If you'll excuse me. Of course, dear. Night, Nancy. That was a pleasant evening. Everything was fine until Bunny said, looks like Deborah is Daddy's girl. He said it. Why do you resent the baby liking me? Why do you try to keep her away from me? Well, what is it, Nancy? Good night, sir. Jane. Yes? Whoever set this up ought to have their head examined. Tell them to get some fresh ideas. See you tonight. I'm going to run down with the old man now. Right. Tommy. Hello, Bill. How are your feet? Oh, marriage seems to agree with them. Hi, slave. Greet a Dorton customer. Hi, Tommy. Hello, girl. <laughs> How are you? How's Perky? Well, he's out of town, so I dropped in to get myself something to wear at the barbecue tonight. Want to see it? What barbecue? My Nancy's, you dope. Oh. oh. Of course. Let's see what you got. Oh, it's just a skirt and blouse. <laughs> <Come on, Perry. laughs> now, I've got no use for the women. A true one may seldom be found. They'll use the man for his money. When it's gone, they'll turn him down. They're all alike at the bottom. Selfish and grasping for all. They'll stay by a man when he's winning. And laugh in his face at his fall. Hi, Charlie. How's the legal eagle? Oh, flying high, Tommy. Hey, you really did all right with that Chapman case. I won it in the newspapers and lost it in court. Oh, we won't let you starve. How's everything? Great. Where's Jane? <laughs> yes, where is Jane? I ask you first. Well, as I was saying, Charlie... Bill, I want to have a word with you. What's up, Charlie? Maybe two or three words. Okay, I'll, I'll be back just for minute. Say, Charlie, were all those things that Chapman's wife said about him really true? Awful. Too wonderful. Honey, what are you doing? I need some help. They're all out there. For me. Just a minute, dear. Oh, come on. Here we go. Whoops. Now. Darling, they're all asking Wait for you. Up. Hurry up, please. Right. Stand up. Say our prayers. Now. Now I lay me down to sleep. Pray the Lord my soul to keep. God bless Mommy and Daddy. Deborah, good girl. Good night, sir. Good night, sweetheart. My friend was an honest cowpuncher, honest and upright and true. But he turned to a hard shooting gunman on account of a gal named Lou. Now, if she'd been the pal that she should have. He might have been raising a son Instead of out there on the prairie Shot by the ranger's gun Oh, oh Nancy! What a wonderful party! Howdy, Nancy! I've been ranging high and low for you. I haven't had this much fun since I left the Barbie yet. Yahoo! How's this? Oh, what is it, Charlie? Oh, thanks. 
Bill, I want to talk to you. Well, go ahead. This last year, you've become hard to talk to. You've become one of those talk fast, walk fast men. Well, I'm sorry, Charlie. I didn't mean to. <laughs> I feel like a heel. How can I help you? If it's money, I'll sign a blank check. You fill in the amount. I'm here to help you, Bill. Do I need help? Nancy was up to see me. Nancy. What she want? She wanted to find out about divorce and or legal separation in this state. I outlined the law and procedure for it. And then? That's as far as it went. Well, that's far enough. That's the blank check I'm giving you, Bill. Fill it in any way you want. Charlie, will you... No, you're right, it's up to me. I appreciate how tough it must have been for you after telling me this. Thanks, Charlie. Charlie, I need a Roomba partner, and you're elected. You don't mind, Bill? Nancy, I want to talk to you. And don't say it's too late, Bill. All right. It was fine to hear that you're mulling over a divorce and or legal separation. That. It was nice having to hear it from Charlie first. Shut that thing off. Yes, Bill. You are thinking about a divorce? Yes, Bill. Why? You're angry now. Let's let it go and I asked more. you why. Because living with you is dull for me. Just as dull as living with me must be for you. It seems we're much nicer people apart than we are together. You can call it incompatibility. Incompatibility? The legal word. You mean we're bankrupt. Some people fail in business, we fail in our marriage. Yes, ma'am. Well, that covers us. What about Deborah? She's the only one I'm thinking of. I'm trying to decide what's best for You're her. trying to decide. Don't you think it's the thing that we should try to decide? Yes, Bill. It's too bad I can't devote all of my time to Deborah the way you do. Don't you think she means as much to me as she does to you? Yes, Bill. Yes, Bill. Yes, Bill. Will you stop yesing me? For heaven's sake, give me something I can fight, not just a word like incompatibility. I almost wish I had another man. Let it go tomorrow. Let's make it some other time. Tomorrow I'm taking Deborah to Santa Barbara for a few days. And what do you call that, a trial separation? I want to think about all this away from you. Not a chance. You and Deborah stay right here. I'll do some thinking. You're going to make me stay here with you? If I have to, yes. How? Don't be silly. I've changed my mind. I'm not going to Santa Barbara tomorrow. I'm going to Las Vegas for a divorce. Anything further you have to say, you can say to Charlie. You're hurting me if that's what you're trying to do. I don't believe. I don't believe I can make you feel pain or anything else. You're numb. Your emotions are completely cold. There. The picture's almost perfect again. Perfect color, perfect composition. The only thing missing is a woman. Only two hours, Philippe? I was sure this dress rated three. Ah, it does, Miss Langley. This way, please. <laughs> Look, there's that 
Langley's name with Mark Hickman again. Yeah, I noticed that. How long she been going with him? I don't know, but she really gets around. Around and around. Making news that isn't fit to print. Hey, she happens to be a friend of mine. What do you think that makes you? Unique? Hey, take it easy, fella. What's going on over there? Only a slight disagreement. Nothing to worry about. Take it easy, boy. Take it easy. It's Bill. Let's get out of here. Well, I say... I'll say it for you. Come on, Jane, we're leaving. She wants to stay. Jane, you're going. I think I'd better. He's, he's rather emphatic in his attitude. I'm terribly sorry, Mark. I'm sure it was going to be a lovely evening. Good night. What was that all about? You. Oh? Sorry. You can do the same for me sometime. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen you quite so overpowering. Well, if you don't like it. Oh, I, I didn't say I didn't like it. I haven't had a drink all day, if that's what you think. Have you eaten? No. I don't know, Jane. I, I just... No sob stories. What? If you want to cry, you'll have to find someone else's shoulders. I've just given up a pleasant evening with a pleasant man. And I've fallen heir to a pleasant evening with a very pleasant woman. <laughs> That's nice. I like that. Good evening. Good evening. Excuse me. Oh, hello. 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 hello! 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 I thought maybe you deserted me, friend. Never, friend. How goes it? Well, you've got your troubles. You don't want to listen to mine. Oh, Ben, meet Bill. Oh, Hello. hi, Bill. How are you? The man's hungry. Oh, that's fine for the overhead. I got some steaks out there so expensive I can't look them in the eye. <laughs> well, then just squint a little. And I'll mess up some cottage fries, huh? Yes, sir, some of those lush beef steak tomatoes. Yeah, and a jug of wine. Now, I'm hungry. Oh. <laughs> I'd fix myself one of those steaks if I could afford it. Well, <laughs> have one on me. Don't think I won't. And he will. Jane. You may think that I've been low. No talk now. Let's make it an after-dinner speech. Soft lights. And, uh, sweet music. <laughs> My gent, not that I'm complaining. But just how long is it since you two have had a good solid meal? <laughs> <laughs> it's good. I didn't oversell it, did I? You certainly did. Can I talk now? Certainly. If you limit yourself to ten words. Like a telegram? Um, dear Jane, may I have the next dance stop? Love. <laughs> I'd love to. You're wonderful. You're all that I've yearned for, the flame that I've burned for. Your body. Now you keep quiet. Words can't make me enjoy this more. Wonderful To be on a crest with his love We've been blessed with it once Every day John, give me a handful of nickels for the jukebox You mean your own nickels? That's what I said Okay, it's your money This I want to keep going the glow that comes 
with love Now my sweet The whirling, we're reeling we found a new feeling It's wonderful So wonderful You're wonderful Keep a place like this open just for two people with bad for the elderly. If I wasn't the boss, I'd have to fire myself. We can take a hit no matter how subtle. Excuse, please. To the bar. bar. How about one for the road? Thanks. How much do you owe you? Oh, plenty, plenty. That's a nice girl you got there. It certainly is. Yes, yeah, she certainly is. She stops. Who is this, uh, Sea Biscuit? No. Man of War? No. Who? It's Happy Sam. Who? Happy Sam. You never heard of him, huh? No, I can't say I am. He bought this place for me. Yeah. I had just lost seven races in a row and was down to the last six bucks I had in the world. So I threw away the form sheet and took a look at the tote board. Happy Sam was 70 to 1. 70 to 1. That was it. I bought three. Two dollar win tickets on it. He broke last, and he was last most of the way. And at the turn for home, he started to run. Oh, no. How he ran. Just kept passing one horse after another. End of the stretch, he was fourth, third, second. Then he's up to the leader. At the 16th pole, head and head. Uh -huh. Neck and neck. Nose to nose. And at the wire, a photo finish. Yeah, and he won, huh? No, he lost. And that did it. That did it. I never bet on another horse. I got a job. And with the money I saved not betting, I bought this place. You know, it's a funny thing. I get nightmares about that race. I can see the whole thing. Start to finish. Head and head. Neck and neck. Terrible. And look. In my nightmare, Happy Sam always wins the race. I hate to think what would happen to me if Happy Sam really wins that race. Just shows you. When you think everything's lost, the good things are just coming your way. Yeah. Yeah, here she comes, too. Hello, lovely. Mm, nice. I like the way you say that. No, the same, please? If you don't mind. The bad news? Yeah. Well, no, no, it's not so bad. You see, for the steak I ate, I only charge a cost. And then for what you ate, I made a reasonable profit. Oh, that's all been once out of life. Someone to talk to, a laugh once in a while, and a reasonable profit. That's right, that's right. Good night, Bill. Good night, Ben. Just drop in any time. Happy Sam and me will always be glad to take care of you. Ben, thanks for taking care of us. Jane, this guy figures right. You can't go wrong playing him straight across the board. The inn has a warm hearth. The innkeeper, a warm heart. Good night, Jane. Good night, Jane. Where to now? I haven't given my after dinner speech yet. I'm in your hands. You know what sold me on this house? The window city at my feet. Life ahead seemed like that street down there. Straight and true. The lights bright all the way. Somehow I turned off onto one of the side streets. But the lights were few and far between. You know, I think if you and I had started out together, there wouldn't have been any turning off. I think every evening would have been as worth living as this evening has been. I don't want to hear you talk like that. <laughs> and I do want to, and I don't want to. 
talk to, Jay. I wouldn't say these things to you if my marriage weren't dead. I, I guess it never really lived. This evening doesn't have to end. Our life together would be straight and true. With no turning off. With each word sacred because we would know what each word meant to the other. To love, honor. To have and to hold. For richer, for poorer. Till death. Jane. Well, you spoke those words once before to Nancy, my sister. And they were just words, and I didn't know what they meant. Nor did Nancy. Bill, I love you. Past, present, and always. And it's only because I do love you that I can say this. It's not for us now. It may never be. But I promise you this. Promise? If the time is ever right for the two of us, you won't have to come to me. I'll come to you. Jane, the time is right now. No, Bill. Why not? Deborah. I know the love you have for her. Yes. Bill, you said your marriage never came to life. Well, you're as fully to blame as Nancy. Jane, I... No, no, don't try to stop me. You said you never knew what the words of the marriage vow truly meant. And Nancy didn't either. And right at the start, when marriage wasn't the golden glory you dreamt it would be, you withdrew a little. And so did Nancy. And now the two of you are ready to let Deborah fall into the gulf between you. Oh, Bill, you must try again, really try, thinking only of Deborah and Nancy, forgetting yourself and me and what we may want. Look, darling, you said you and Nancy turned off on one of those side streets. The light's few and far between. But look, sooner or later, every side street turns back into a street where the lights are bright as far as you can see. Bill, please, you must try. Nothing like bacon and eggs for breakfast. I think we can get a patent on them. They make a swell alarm clock. <laughs> Would you like some coffee? <laughs> oh, this poor Dagwood. <laughs> he had it coming to him. What? I said he had it coming to him. <laughs> What's the matter? Don't I get any coffee? I've already offered you some. <laughs> I'm sorry. I... Nancy. <laughs> Very domestic. How low can you get? Nancy, let me explain. I was just... I know you were just here. I can see that. It's blatant and obvious. Nancy, shut up. Don't you wish you could shut me up? Where's Deborah? Deborah is mine now. All mine. Don't try asking for any time with it. Thank you for that, Jane. That's what I've been saying to you all my life anyway, isn't it? Thank you, thank you, thank you! Oh, Nancy, your jealousy's insane. Don't say that! Where's Deborah?
spent the morning doing just what you ordered, Dr. Carter. I thought about how it was when Bill proposed to me. He was so surprised when I accepted he could hardly talk. Now I'd like you to think about something else. To think about just what happened when your child was killed. About Jane. Jane's downstairs again. She'd like to see you. Any mention of Jane and you freeze. Don't you see, Mrs. Prentice? That's blocking, and that's what we must try to overcome. Now, if you'd just say her name once, just once, it'll be a start. I can tell you why you won't. Partly because you blame her for the death of Deborah, but principally because you know that you too are to blame. You too are guilty. You're guilty of running away from marriage. Guilty of rushing into a divorce at the wrong time. The roots are deep and twisted. A mother who died when you were born. Jane's mothering and raising you. You loved her and resented her at the same time. Bill, your marriage. It wasn't what you dreamed, romance. I'm telling you each day and night how fair you were and how much he cared for you. Roses each night when he came home. Sunday breakfast in bed. White tie and champagne. But it wasn't like that because marriage is hard, never-ending work. So much of it's dull routine. A hundred unimportant things to be done each day. Unimportant, but all important. Why didn't I know these things before I married? She... She did. She did. She did try. Jane. Jane. Jane, the Jane. Jane, the 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 Jane, you help me, can you? I'll try. But I need you, Mrs. Burns. I need your help. Oh, Dr. Phil, if I could only see her. This recovery is a slow business, my dear. But Dr. Carter feels that ultimately she'll be able to live a full life. That's what I hope and pray for. It's too bad her marriage to Bill didn't work out. If only they could have had another child. It would have helped you so much. But even an adoption... But a child of their own, their own flesh and blood would be so much better. Nancy can't have any more children. Is that it? Yes, my dear, that's what I was trying to tell you about. That day in your office when you told me about myself? Yes, dear. That's why she was so possessive. Why Deborah meant so much to her. Why she quarreled in the hospital with me about nothing. Poor Nancy. Carter's handled a case similar to this where an adoption. Goodbye, Dr. Phil. Bill. 
Thanks, friend. I thought he'd turn up here sooner or later. wedded husband, to love, honor, and cherish him, to comfort him in sickness and in health, and forsaking all others, to be to him a faithful and sincere helpmate and companion, bearing your share of his burdens and responsibilities, and sharing with him your joys? I do. Since William and Jane have here agreed in the presence of these witnesses to be joined in marriage and have pledged their faith to each other, I now pronounce you husband and wife. Les deseo muy buena suerte. Many happy returns. And the same to you. Darling, you're trembling. Yes. Hold me, Bill. It's so good, isn't it? To just let go and stop living on your nerve. Yes, dear, it is.
construction. Scatel. Bandage scissors. Cetrical forceps. Purgatrate. Sponge. Sponge. Scalpel. Scalpel. Hemostat. Tissue forceps. Suction. Bandage scissors.
I want for her whatever she wants for herself. Plus just a little luck besides. Little Jane. Hello, little Jane. 